Some of the biggest banks in America are warning about unprecedented financial chaos in the final months of 2023. Today, we share the insights of several experts who believe disaster is ahead. With an overvalued stock market being threatened by a consumer recession and an impending real estate collapse, increasing the chances of widespread failures in the financial system as loan defaults continue to soar. Major banks like Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley are now preparing for potential bank runs as depositors start losing confidence in financial institutions amid rising levels of insolvency. They have just started taking cautious measures to prevent a domino effect. But first things first, let's start by the root cause of this developing crisis, which is the danger looming over U.S. stocks. A new note released by Morgan Stanley points to trouble in equity markets as economic growth disappoints and consumer spending hits a wall. Right now, U.S. equity investors are actually hoping conditions to turn around and betting on an economic re-acceleration and higher consumer spending during the fall and winter. However, a slowing outlook for September and October data is not being priced into many stocks and expectations, and investors' hopes are about to be crushed by a cruel dose of reality says Morgan Stanley's Chief Investment Officer and Chief U.S. Equity Strategist, Michael Wilson. During an interview with Rosenberg Research, led by financial analyst David Rosenberg, Wilson revealed a long list of reasons why he thinks the S&P 500 will face a double-digit crash this year. He pointed to manufacturing and business surveys signaling growing economic turmoil, depressed outlooks for revenue and earnings growth, and many companies having to refinance at higher interest rates in the next few months. The strategist notes that stocks valuations will be caught by declining consumer spending, resuming student loan payments, rising delinquencies in certain household cohorts, higher gas prices, and weakening data in the housing sector. Bank of America strategist Michael Hartnett shares the same view. He warned earlier this month that the possibility of an economic contraction remains high as the Federal Reserve continues to tighten credit conditions. Meanwhile, weaker than expected corporate earnings will deteriorate economic activity even further this fall. J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. predicted this week with analysts seeing a major profit recession in the fourth quarter. In fact, Morgan Stanley raised red flags on consumer stocks, one of the brightest corners of the market this year. The bank's economists argue that the rally is already faltering and stress that elevated levels of household spending cannot be sustained in an environment of stalling wage growth, surging consumer debt levels and rising unemployment. On top of that, the bank's CIO cautioned that recent hikes in energy prices could take consumers, many of whom are struggling to afford inflated living costs and larger monthly credit card, car loan and mortgage payments, far past their breaking point. New data shows that performance in the consumer discretionary sector is breaking down, with 44% of stocks trading below the 200-day moving average. In fact, after rising slightly in the week ended September 9th, consumer stocks have been tumbling for more than two weeks, losing about 6% of their value following the Fed's announcement that it would maintain interest rates higher for longer in the fight against inflation. Wilson said the market is not trading well under the surface. There are a lot of car crashes out there referring to businesses with weaker balance sheets and retailers reporting dropping sales volumes. In general, investors are pricing in a powerful economic rebound, impressive revenue and earnings growth, and the Fed cutting rates sooner rather than later, he explained. In this scenario, any bad news could bring things crashing down. This is how you take the S&P down a lot more than people are thinking about today, Wilson emphasized. 
The executive said that U.S. stocks look risky and expensive and could see a double-digit correction during the fall. Wilson cautioned, the S&P 500 risk-reward today is one of the worst I have ever seen, given the earnings setup that we see in front of us, combined with the valuation that we have today. He predicts that any shock to the system could send the S&P 500 plummeting from nearly 4,500 points today to the low 3,000s, a drop of more than 25%. Wilson is not alone in sounding the alarm about stocks. A new Goldman analysis forecasts that the S&P 500 will underperform in October and generate dismal returns for the next 12 months. Moreover, Jeffrey's financial grouping analysts downgraded several companies on expectations that profit and cash flow levels fall below their debt levels in the coming months. The institutions also highlighted the risk to stocks and financial markets of further regional bank troubles. More concerningly, the threats emerging in the commercial real estate sector could be a ticking time bomb for America's biggest mortgage. <clears throat> All right, Shalom. So as you heard, giving all praise to you, Halabash and Al-Shai, Shemra Kakadash, double honor to the head elders, pastors and good. House is a great millstone. Shout out to Joachim <clears throat> out there pushing his word. Yeah, that was just a uh, quick epic economist report. And through the spirit, I just wanted to uh, update that. Uh, this is what it's looking like. It's not looking up. The economy is not looking up. All right. Things are getting financially uh, strained. In, in this in this uh, society, which is a good thing for the hopeful elect for us, because this is a goddamn nightmare that we need to uh, desperately get the get the hell up out of. And uh, I'll bring out a scripture. The one that comes to mind is the one in Habakkuk. All right. Habakkuk, uh, it goes, Habakkuk 2 and 6, shall not all these, all these is dealing with these other nations, okay, these other nations such as the, the, uh, the, the other Edomites of these different continents such as Russia, all right, you have the uh, BRICS uh, conglomerate set up. Okay, uh, you have, you know, these uh, other Edomites and these other continents that's uh, pretty much unsatisfied with uh, America's, you know, tactics. All right, and it's going to <laughs> end up with being... Uh, a thermonuclear, thermonuclear fallout, man. You know, the allies, man, the allies of America, as you see, I had the picture up there, a depiction of the great whore, according to the Bible, which is America, right? So now all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him. And say, woe to him that increase of that which is not his. All right. This is definitely dealing with the Edomite. All right. The Edomites here in America, even all the other Edomites out there in the other continents. They all gain their uh, rulership by getting and taking, should I say, ill-gotten gain. All right. Robbery, rape, and murder. All right. Complete theft. All right. But mainly here in America. All right. Because this is the, uh, the the focal point that the Most High has ordained. He's ordained America. To, the, the, he got a bullseye on this goddamn America. So-called America. All right. It says, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that laded himself with thick clay. And that thick clay 
when you go into the Hebrew, all right, it means debt, D-E-B-T, all right, debt, okay, heavy debts. And uh, the beloved brother of Mwanga Bar, he brought out the stats not too long ago, the, 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 um, the debt clock just hit 33 trillion. All right. So, you know, so that's why I do the spare. I just want to do a update y'all on that. All right. And, uh, well, when was the next one? All praises to Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shai by Shimmer Kakwadash. Shalom.